Hello, and welcome to Wireshark Certified Network Analyst video course. Today, we will take the first steps in working with Wireshark. Then we will learn how to use its basic features. In this video, we will define Wireshark. We'll see how Wireshark works, as well as the start and main interface features. And we'll take a look at the options available through the right-click submenus. And at the end, I will give you one lab in which you can train in the learn skills. Now at the end, you can take a small quiz which I've prepared for you, so you can test what you've learned from this video. Now Wireshark is the world's most popular network analyzer, available for free to all as an open source tool. It started as a project by Gerald Combs with the name Ethereal, which was later changed to Wireshark. One important point to mention is that the version number tells you whether it's a developmental or stable release. If the second digit after the decimal point is even, it's a stable reversion. Otherwise, it's a development release. Now, let's talk about the basic Wireshark functionality. When the computer accesses the network, it relies on a specific driver based on the network interface card. When the computer is snipping traffic, a libcap or wincap library provides an additional driver designed to access raw data on the network. While capturing data, a tool called dumpcap is launched to the actual capture, which catches frames passed from libcap wincap drivers. If a capture filter is applied, the frames are selected before being sent to dumpcap. The main responsibility of dumpcap is putting stop conditions when the capture needs to end. The capture engine passes frames to the core engine, which is the heart of Wireshark. There are thousands of dissectors which break up frames into layers and fields, helping us perform analysis rather than decrypting hexadecimal dumps of the traffic. Wiretype library read captures files from a drive rather than the network, and it supports almost any possible capture file format available. Then it passes the frames to the core engine as well. There are two flavors of Wireshark, the graphical user interface one, and the common line one, which is called T-Shark. The second one is very useful for automated tasks, which can be easily achieved in a Linux environment, which I strongly recommend. Now, let's introduce you to the Wireshark interface. The first time you open Wireshark, you'll see the start screen. It consists of four sections, Capture, Files, Online, and Capture Help. In the Capture area, you can list the active interfaces. You can start capturing directly from one interface. Or you can change the capture options like stop conditions, name resolution, and others. In the file area, you can open a previously captured file or a recently opened one. You can check other sample captures online as well. From the online area, you can find useful online Wireshark links. And in the capture help area, there are some links uh, helpful for capturing information. Now this is the main screen you should get used to in working with Wireshark. It's composed of nine different sections. The first one, called the title bar, is the one you've seen in many other programs as well. Here you can see the file name which is currently opened, or if it's a live capture, and you can find the interface on which you're capturing right now. Next to it, you'll see the current window name, which you can customize if you have multiple ones opened. To do this, just go to Edit, Preferences, Layout, and in the custom window title, type the name you want. The last part of the title bar shows us the Wireshark version you're using. The second part of our Wireshark window is the main menu. Here you can find all the features of Wireshark support, but don't use it too often. You should avoid using this menu whenever possible. To save time by accessing these options from the other uh, GUI elements, for example, the main toolbar, which contains the most frequently used options in Wireshark. Next to it, there's a filter toolbar, which allows you to display just the packets that interest you. There's one more toolbar which is hidden by default called the wireless toolbar used to capture wireless traffic. 
you can enable this one or disable others from the view menu. The biggest part of the window is composed of three sections called panes. Here you can list and review all the packets. The first pane, called the packet list pane, allows you to see which hosts are communicating, the protocols in use, and general information about the frames. By default, you will see the following columns. Number, which shows the order in which the frames are captured, and by default Wireshark sorts your packets based on this column. The time column, which is where you can see when each frame arrived, compared to the first frame. The source and destination columns, here you can find the highest layer addresses, so if it's an IP packet, you will see IP addresses, but if it's an ART packet, just the MAC addresses will be displayed. The protocol column will display the last uh, dissector applied. So if we had an HTTP request, Ethernet, IP, and TCP dissectors will be ignored, showing just the HTTP in this column. The length column will show us the total frame length. And the last column, called info, provides basic information about the frame. You can easily reorder or resize the columns if you want. Uh, by clicking one time on the column name, we sort the packets based on this column. If you press one more time, it will be reverse reordered. To return to the default sorting, press one time on the number column. If you right click on the column name, you can align the contents, change the column name, um, hide it temporarily, or remove it permanently. Be aware that hiding too many columns can slow down Wireshark. Remove it if you don't need it. Hidden columns contents are still calculated, but they're just not displayed. To unhide a column, check it under displayed columns list. The next pane is called packet details pane. It shows the details of the packet selected in the packet list pane. Here comes the main power of Wireshark dissectors. You can see all the layers and fields in the selected packet. Then the last pane, called Packet Bytes pane, shows you the hexadecimal representation of the selected packets, as well as the offsets and an ASCII representation. You can see the bits representation as well by right-clicking and selecting Bits view. And the last element of the Wireshark GUI is the status bar. It consists of two buttons and three columns, which can be resized when necessary. The first button is called Expert Info Composite. This button is colored to show you the highest level of information contained in the Expert Info window. It can show you numerous network concerns seen in the trace file. The second button is the Trace File Annotation button. Click it to add view or edit trace file comments. The first column changes depending on what the what is selected in the panes above. We can see the file name and size, but if you click on a field in the packet details pane, you will see the field name and size. The next column shows the number of total, displayed, or marked and ignored packets, if there are any, as well as time required to load the trace file. And in the last column, we see the current profile. We can customize Wireshark for different tasks and have configurations saved in different profiles for easy access. You should become familiar with the main toolbar to be a good analyst. It's divided into seven parts. The first one contains the interface list, capture options, start, stop, and restart capture buttons. The second section contains the file open, save, close, and reload buttons. The next one allows us to navigate in the trace file. Here you can find the following functions. Find, go back, go forward, go to number, go first, and last packet. Now this panel allows us to enable or disable packet coloring and auto scroll the list in a live capture. The fifth part is used to zoom in, out, 100%, or resize the columns to fit the contents. This one contains the following icons, capture filters, display filters, coloring rules, and preferences. The last button is a link to Wireshark's user guide. 
Now let's talk about the main menu and the options which are not included in the main toolbar or in the right click submenu, which we will study later in this video. In the file menu, we can use the following functions. Open, recent, to view previously open files, merge to combine two trace files into one, work with file sets, which is useful when you have lots of traffic and don't want to slow down Wireshark, uh, the export features used, for example, to extract a whole web page from the trace file. Uh, from the edit menu, we can often use mark packet options. When a packet is being marked, you will see them with a black background, and you can do so uh, to highlight packets of interest. Marks are temporary, so when you reopen the trace file, they will be removed. Ignored packets are the ones that don't interest you. So for example, when you apply a filter, those packets won't be considered. The Preferences items opens the global Wireshark settings. Here you can configure the user's interface, capture settings, printing configuration, name resolution, filter expressions, statistics, and setting uh, for all the supported protocols. One important aspect is the network name resolution. Uh, do not enable it unless required. It will make Wireshark generate DNS requests, polluting the traffic. Now let's close the preferences window for now and return back to the main menu. From the view menu, we are interested in just enabling disabling toolbars and panes at the moment. Go and capture menus are both accessible from the main toolbar for better efficiency. The only item not accessible through other means is the analyze menu is a display filter macros. The statistics menu provides many powerful interpretation features of Wireshark. Most of them are self-explanatory, but we will discuss them in other videos. Telephony menus offers tools to analyze real-time traffic. It's seldom used, but still useful. Through the tools menu, we can create firewall rules or access the uh, Lua scripting tool, which unfortunately isn't discussed in this course. In the internals, you will find the, the dissector tables and the supported protocols. I didn't find the use uh, of those functions yet. From the help menu, you can access helpful links, or if you click about Wireshark, you can find under the folders tab, the location of the configuration files Wireshark uses. Double click on a link to open the folder. In the filter toolbar, if you press this button, uh, you will see the list of saved display filters. You can edit this list to fit your own needs. This field is used to type your own custom filter. And by pressing this arrow, you can list the recently used ones. If you have some filters you often use, you can type uh, the filter here and press save, and it will appear as a button uh, right here. To list all available fields and filter on them, uh, click the expression button, but it's rarely used. Some of the Wireshark functionality can be quickly accessed by right-clicking into the packet list or the packet details pane. When you right-click on the interested packet in the packet list pane, you will see this menu. At the moment, we are interested in the following. Mark, ignore packet, which we've already talked about. Packet comment, as you may remember, the whole trace file can have its annotation. And every packet has its own comment as well. It will appear as a new green layer in the packet details pane. If the comment is too long, you'll just see a part of it in the packet details pane. If the trace file uses a protocol on an unusual port, Wireshark may not detect it. To apply the correct dissector, press the decode as item, and on the transport tab, select the protocol you need. After pressing OK, the change should apply. By selecting Show Packet in a new window, or just double-clicking the packet, you can open another window, which is useful to compare two different packets. If you right-click on a field in the Packet Details pane, you will see the following menu. You can expand, collapse the whole packet, or just a subtree. You can create a new column with the selected field, which is an amazingly powerful feature, which we will apply a lot in this course. 
you can also find links to the protocol wiki page or a reference to the field you selected. Also, a quick way to access protocol preferences is directly from the right click on a field in the layer of the protocol you need. Today, we discussed what Wireshark is, how it captures traffic or opens a trace file from a drive. We've also analyzed the Wireshark start screen and the nine GUI elements from the main screen, as well as when we should and when we should not use the main menu to access Wireshark options. Most of the features can be accessed from the main toolbar and right click functionality. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.